Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science, and today I want to tell you about the ladder and the number operators for the quantum harmonic oscillator in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. In the context of the quantum harmonic oscillator, ladder operators allow us to change the energy eigenvalues by a discrete amount, essentially going up and down a ladder. The reason why ladder operators are so useful in quantum harmonic oscillators is that the energy eigenvalues are quantized, which means that you can only change the energy in discrete steps. The number operator is a related operator that allows us to count the energy quanta. These two operators are used a lot in quantum mechanics. Our plan for today is to explore the mathematical properties so that you can use them easily and confidently from now on. In case you need more convincing, there are also ladder operators in angular momentum, so everything that we learn today will also help you beyond the harmonic oscillator. So let's go! The quantum harmonic oscillator is characterized by a Hamiltonian H whose kinetic energy takes the usual form, and whose potential energy is quadratic in the position operator. Remember that in quantum mechanics, the position and the momentum operators obey the canonical commutation relation. Although the two observables that feature in this Hamiltonian are position and momentum, it turns out that to develop the theory of the quantum harmonic oscillator, there are two linear combinations of these operators that are extremely useful. As you may suspect, these are the so-called ladder operators. The first one is a lowering operator, and we label it by A, and it is equal to 1 over square root of 2, then this prefactor times x, plus this prefactor times p. The second is the racing operator, which is the adjoint of the lowering operator, and it is therefore equal to this. Note that we have a minus sign here, as we need the complex conjugate of any scalar when we calculate the adjoint. In principle, we would also need the adjoint of the operators x and p, but there are Hermitian operators, so we can write them without the dagger. I can probably guess what you're thinking right now. What a strange linear combination that looks completely taken out of a hat. At this stage, we're just going to accept that their definition includes these prefactors, and we will also see later that this choice leads to a very convenient expression down the line. We're also, for now, going to accept that these operators are called raising and lowering operators, and collectively called ladder operators, but the rationale for these names will become clearer later in this same video. We can invert these equations to find the position and momentum operators in terms of the ladder operators, but I will leave this as an exercise for you to try at home. The final result you should find is that the position operator is equal to this, and the momentum operator equal to this. The very first thing to note about the ladder operators is that they are not Hermitian operators. And in fact, by the definition, they are each other's adjoint. This means that, unlike position and momentum, the ladder operators are not observables. At this point, you may think, well, then why bother? If we already have the quantum harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian in terms of the position and momentum operators, which are themselves observables, what is the point of introducing these two new operators that aren't even observables? As we'll see as we develop the theory of the quantum harmonic oscillator, even though the ladder operators aren't observables, they actually are extremely useful. Let's start with their commutation relation. The only non-trivial commutator is that between A and A dagger. Using the definition of the lowering operator up here, we get this. And using the definition of the raising operator up here, we get this. We can now expand this commutator into four terms. The first is between x and x, the second between p and p, the third between x and p, and the fourth between p and x. Feel free to pause here for a second to convince yourself of this step. Moving on, these two commutators vanish because they are simply the commutators of an operator with itself, which trivially commute. This here is the canonical commutation relation, so we get ih bar, and this here is the negative of the canonical commutation relation. Overall, the expression simplifies to this, this combines to 1, and so does this. So overall, we get 1. 
So in summary, the commutator of a and a dagger equals 1. This is a nice and simple expression, and we now see the motivation behind defining the ladder operators with these prefactors up here. They allow us to have this very compact commutation relation. We should also mention at this stage that for the quantum harmonic oscillator, this commutation relation between ladder operators encodes the same information as the canonical commutation relation between position and momentum. As you study quantum mechanics, you will find yourself using this commutation relation just as much as this one, so you will end up remembering both without a problem. We're now ready to introduce the other important operator that we will cover today, the so-called number operator. We label it with a capital N and set it equal to a dagger a. Again, for now we're just going to accept that this operator has this form and is called number operator. We will briefly come back to the rationale behind this at the end of the video, but for the full description you will have to check the video on the eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator. The first thing to note is that the number operator, unlike the ladder operators, is Hermitian. To see this, let's consider n dagger. Plugging in its definition, we get this. The adjoint of a product is the reverse product of the adjoints. This here is just a, so we get a dagger a, which is indeed the number operator, confirming that it is Hermitian. The second thing to do is to calculate the commutation relations between the number operator and the ladder operators. If we start with the commutator of n and a, we can then plug in the definition of n. At this point, let's remember the general result between the commutator of the product of two operators a, b, and a third operator c, which gives this. Using this result, we can write out our commutator into these two terms. This commutator here vanishes, and using the commutation relation between the ladder operators, we find that this is minus 1. So overall, we get minus a. Repeating the same exercise for the commutator of n with a dagger, we find that it is equal to a dagger. You don't actually need to remember any of these commutation relations, but we will use them constantly in our study of the quantum harmonic oscillator. So you should either be ready to derive them as needed, or you can simply keep a list for reference. OK, so we're now ready to understand why the ladder operators have the name they have. To do so, we need to consider the eigenvalue equation of the number operator, where I label both eigenvalue and eigenstate with lambda. Let's start by constructing a new state, A acting on the eigenstate lambda. The first result we consider is that if lambda is an eigenstate of n, then this new state, A lambda, is also an eigenstate of n. To see this, let's act with n on this new state. Using this commutator up here we just derived, we find that na is equal to a n minus a. Plugging this into our expression, we get these two terms. As lambda is an eigenstate of n, we get this. And overall, we get lambda minus 1 times the state a lambda. So we see that by acting with n on this state, we get lambda minus 1 times the same state. This means that a lambda is an eigenstate of n with eigenvalue lambda minus 1. This means that we can rewrite this state as lambda minus 1. And in general, we'll have some normalization constant in front, which I call c minus. So what does a do when acting on an eigenstate of n? It simply gives us another eigenstate of n, but the eigenvalue has decreased by 1. And this is the reason why we call A a lowering operator. We could repeat the exact same exercise using A dagger, and we would find that n acting on A dagger lambda is equal to lambda plus 1 A dagger lambda. This means that A dagger lambda is an eigenstate of n with eigenvalue lambda plus 1. This also means that we can write the action of a dagger on an eigenstate of n like this. And as the eigenvalue lambda increases by 1, we call a dagger a raising operator. 
This already gives you a flavour as to the names lowering and raising operators. It will make more sense towards the end of the video, and for the full details you can check the video on the eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator. To complete the picture, let's calculate the normalization C- and C+, associated with the action of the lateral operators on the eigenstates of the number operator. If we start with the lowering operator, we first pick the left-hand side of this equation and consider the norm squared of A lambda. By definition, this is equal to the bra times the kit. This here now is the number operator, so we end up with this. Using the fact that lambda is an eigenstate of n, we eventually get this. This is 1, so we end up with lambda. We can now use the right-hand side here to repeat the same calculation, starting with the norm squared of c minus lambda minus 1. It gives this. This bracket is 1, and we get this. This expression must now be equal to this expression, so we get that the absolute value squared of the normalization is equal to lambda. This implies that c minus is equal to square root of lambda, where I have made a simple face choice so that c minus is real. This means a acting on lambda gives square root of lambda times the state lambda minus 1. We could repeat the same exercise for the raising operator, and we would find that a dagger acting on lambda gives square root of lambda plus 1 multiplying the state lambda plus 1. The final thing I want to do today is to anticipate why the ladder and number operators are so useful in the study of the quantum harmonic oscillator. Let's start by writing the number operator. We want to rewrite it in terms of the position and momentum operators, so we first plug in a dagger in terms of x and p and then a also in terms of x and p. We can now carry out this multiplication, which gives these four terms. Feel free to pause here for a moment to cross-check this. These two terms here combine to i over h bar times the commutator of x and p, which in turn gives i over h bar times i h bar, which is equal to minus 1. Therefore, we can rewrite the number operator like this. To make progress, we're now going to build the quantity h bar omega times n plus 1 over 2. At this point, this may appear rather arbitrary, but bear with me and we'll see what happens. Using this expression we just derived and inserting it here, we get this. We can now multiply the h bar omega through and reordering the two terms, we get this. And now you can see where we're going. This here is the Hamiltonian for the quantum harmonic oscillator. Overall, we can write the Hamiltonian of the quantum harmonic oscillator in terms of the number operator like this. Or, using the definition of the number operator, we can also write it in terms of the ladder operators like this. As you can see, when we write the Hamiltonian in terms of these operators, it takes a particularly simple form that will prove extremely convenient. We can now also briefly anticipate the reason for the name number operator for n here. As we'll learn in the video on the eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian, energy is quantized. This means that energy can only change in discrete steps called quanta, and these steps have a magnitude of h bar omega. In this context, we will see that this operator n counts how many energy quanta there are in the system, hence the name number operator. In a similar way, we will find that the raising and lowering operators are the operators that allow us to add or remove energy quanta from the system, hence their name. And we're done. Here I simply have a list of the main results we obtained today. We will use them in many of the other videos on the quantum harmonic oscillator, so an easy way to keep them handy would be for you to copy them down or take a screenshot.
Ladder and number operators are both extremely useful when working with the quantum harmonic oscillator. So it's definitely worth going through all these maths because we're going to use these results all the time. As a first example, you can check out our video where we use the ladder operators to figure out the energy eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator. And more generally, ladder operators also play key roles in other areas of quantum mechanics, including angular momentum or second quantization. And as always, if you liked the video, please subscribe.